queensandmachines.com So I made this die casting mold back in community college for a soap dish. This was the final project for the tooling class. Uh, I didn't know this at the time, but it's actually considered a permanent mold, not a die casting mold, but nobody was around to tell me that. So we casted it, and it was an absolute atrocity to try to get the soap dish out. Ended up damaging the mold, messing up all my ejector pins. Yeah, a lot of chiseling later. We actually did manage to get the mold apart and the soap dish out. So I wanted to make something to make this whole process easier, instead of just quitting altogether and never casting this again. So what we got? We got the two halves of the mold, and then there's these backing plates which get drilled and counterboard for these shafts that go in between them. The fixed half gets doweled to the plate. The moving half gets this hex-shaped pocket in for an acme nut. Oh wait, everything's going way too fast. And then the, the part gets ejected. Simple enough, right? Yes, let's get started. So we start with the two backing plates, which I had pre-Blanchard ground at work to save me a bunch of machining time. I still had to machine the edges, so what I did was I set them up in the vise, top and bottom, and started milling them with my three quarters indexable Seco carbide end mill that I won from the Bar Z Bash two years ago. You know, I always wondered, since the word Seco means dry in Spanish, does that mean you're not supposed to use coolant? But anyways, now let's drill the hole locations in the fixed half of the mold. Here are the mounting holes for the shafting, and also the mounting holes to attach the mold and the dowel holes. Now plunging the corners for the shafting. I didn't have any 1 inch end mills, but I did have this weird looking form tool that did the job just as good. Alright, this side's done. Let's flip it over and counterbore those screw holes. We're using 3 8 cap screws, so there's a 5 8 end mill to counterbore. The spindle on this old bridge port runs out quite a bit. But in this case, it's a good thing because I was actually wanting these holes to be oversized. That way these slide right in easily. Speaking of run out, I was going to ream the dowel holes, but I drilled them 1 64th under and the reamer just slid right in. Now drilling the corresponding dowel holes in the fixed half of the mold. Here it should be a slit fit, so I'm just drilling them. Now for the moving half, instead of the mounting holes, we just have a single hole in the center, which is going to be milled out to fit the Acme nut. Oh, lovely. Plan B. Ready to cut the hex pocket for this Acme nut. What is this? Amateur night at the Apollo? Yes, broken end mill. We thought the depth of cut and the feed rates were too high, so we tried it again with lower settings. Oh, right, so we tried it again and the same thing happened. The material probably work hardened around the part where the tool was crashing. And uh, it looks like my only hope for making this thing happen is to just plunge the whole locations with my three quarter inch tool. Help me, all industrial supply, you're my only hope. And uh, we had a little bit of accidental homing the X and Y position while the Z was at zero, but that's not important. Let's just go for it. Oh man, this is what we should have done from the start. It's cutting so easy. Who needs a perfectly hex-shaped pocket anyways? It's not like the Acme nut's going anywhere.
All right. I think just a little more cleaning up and then the acne nut will fit right in. I had to plunge six more locations to get these points down so the acne nut would fit in. Yes, amateur night at the Apollo continues. When I hit return to zero, forgetting that the Z zero was below the surface of the plate. And uh, just so happens to be on the day I forgot to bring the spare inserts for that. Hoping that the tool isn't totally destroyed. Anyhow, let's just put a high speed cutter in there and finish plunging these two. All right, does it fit? Yes. And below the surface, yes, oh my gosh. Doesn't have to be a perfect fit, just as long as it's physically impossible for this thing to rotate. And now we're gonna drill the holes to fit the cap over this. Man, it's a shame I destroyed this cutter, man. And I was just starting to like it. Right when it saved the day, man. Maybe I'll win the Ox Tools competition again this year at the Barzi Bash so I can buy me another one from All Industrial Supply. Because that was a good cutter. And I still have a bunch of backup inserts. Alright, enough crying about broken tools. Let's start assembling this thing. So, I utilized the, the old ejector screw. Threaded holes as mounting holes now. And uh, yeah, let's, let's press fit those dowels in since the, those holes were machined so precisely. Oh yeah, that feels secure. Now what, let's screw it on. Three hours, no, two weeks later. All right, two of the backing plates are done now. Now all that's left to do is machine the guide bushings out of that piece of material, make the ejection manifold, as I call it, to bolt onto there, and weld this thing on here, machine it smooth, and turn down the ejector pins and make the rest of the ejector pins. So there's quite a work left to do, Matt. All right, we're gonna drill some holes in these bushing rails and some dowels to mount them on to the side of the moving half of the mold. Little drilling and reaming action here. I'm using the drill hog bits that I won at the Bar Z Dash two years ago and reaming the holes for a dowel to make sure the position doesn't change when I bolt it to the side of the soap dish mold. Yes, got both rails drilled and reamed, the reamed holes. The hole goes all the way through, but the reamer only went about half inch deep because I'm using one inch dowels. Don't want to get them stuck in there, so you have a knockout hole from the other side. Now I'm going to flip them over and counterbore the screw holes from this side. Oh no, the end mill's spinning backwards again. No, it's not. It's just some studio magic. Now to drill and tap the corresponding holes in the soap dish mold itself. And there we have it. Now just gotta tap those holes and then attach the rails on so we can mill the holes for the bushing. Now setting it up in the vise and milling those bushing holes. Now we're going to turn some of the caps for the ejector pins.
tapping the holes in the side for a set screw. All right, now for what I call the ejector manifold. This piece serves two purposes. It both houses the ejector pin caps and also retains the screw for unscrewing the whole entire mold. I started by drilling a 7 8 hole and counterboring it one and a quarter inch, and then drilled these four holes for bolting it onto the moving half of the mold. Then after transferring the hole locations to the moving half, I drilled and tapped those holes. I then bolted it onto the mold to check the alignment with the Acme screw, and then transfer punched the locations for the ejector pins. Then a lot of good old-fashioned drilling stuff where you think it should go and hoping it lines up. After I was satisfied with the ejector pin locations, I went ahead and drilled some more dowel holes. Because hey, this is a contest about who can use the most dowel pins, right? That's what tooling's all about. Location, location, location. Oh, wait, that's real estate. Now for some final work on the ejector pins. First I cut them roughly to length with the grinding disc, but I wanted to get them more precise, so I set them up on the surface grinder with the moving half as a guide and surface grind them all to length. Then I put them in the lathe and machined the heads to the right size. Grinding angled set screw flats on the ejector pins so they sit up into the caps. Then using some clamps I preloaded the springs and then attach the set screws. Now boring a hole in what will become the handle for tightening the molding press. All right, I took the liberty of machining the set screw hole off camera, and now I'm making these pockets in here so the, the tubing that I'm gonna weld in there sits in straight, but also to make the wall thickness here thinner so I get more weld penetration in this piece. And because I like making stuff feel precision instead of just welding it on. Now welding the handle together and welding a piece of one and a quarter inch round stock that I drilled onto the end of the Acme screw. And then turning it down in the lathe to make it look like a big old marshmallow on a stick. And that fits in the ejector manifold like so. Alright, now time for some final assembly. And that is it. Oh yeah, what a beauty. So, here's how it works. You pour the metal in when it's closed, obviously not in the vertical position like this. And then when you open it, the ejector pin caps butt up against this back plate, and it pushes the ejector pins forward, thereby pushing the part out of the mold. All right, let's fire up the foundry and pour one up. And the camera goes blurry right as I'm pouring it. Oh, now you can see it. All right, in the words of George Clinton, let's tear the roof off this mother sucker. Oh my goodness, that was so easy. And it didn't stick to the non-ejecting half. All right, here we go. Rock the Casper! Oh my gosh, it's working. I think they bottomed out. But... That shit worked! I think the sprue is just the only part stuck on there. I'm gonna go get a pry bar action. The moment of truth. That's that. Thank you so much, Emma, for this competition. I probably wouldn't have got around to this project for quite some time if not for it. 
Also thanks to Stan from Bar Z for hosting the coolest house party ever. And thanks to all Industrial Supply for that shopping spree again. That's where I got the Acme threaded rod. And I will see you when hell freezes over. <laughs> <laughs>